You're listening to the Startup Soiree Podcast, episode number four. Gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Startup Soiree podcast. Uh, excited to have you all back here with me again. This is Patrick Reif. Um, today's guest is Yair Flicker. Yair is a, uh, we'll call him a veteran staple on the Baltimore um, startup scene and somebody that I got to know a few months ago and we kind of hit it off and had lunch a few times and it's been an easy conversation all along. So um, I invited him on today to be a guest. Yeah, you also um, came out and supported the the first startup soiree event, um, which was last week uh, as of this recording. We'll see when, when this actually publishes. Um, so it'll be fun to have him be the first guest after um, an event that we've done and, and maybe we can talk about it a little bit as well. But um, silence the Pat Rife gab. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Yair, thanks for, uh, for being a guest on the Startup Soiree podcast. My pleasure. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so if, if you don't mind, um, give, give us a little snapshot about, uh, about Yair and, uh, and his company and, and what he's done and, and where you're at. Sure. So I'll start with my company. We're SmartLogic. You can visit us online at smartlogic.io. We are a consulting company based here in Baltimore. And what we do is build custom web and mobile software applications. Um, So we are 13 people based in Canton. We started in the Emerging Technology Center's Eastern Campus. Then we moved to their Canton Campus. Then when that campus closed about a year and a half, ago we moved to the broom factory building in canton would you mind uh telling us a little bit about um kind of what your experience was with the etc and how you got involved with them um definitely there's someone who who is obviously there they're uh they're on our radar um but haven't had a chance to do a lot of deep diving and learning about etc yet and you're the first guest that we've had on that has an experience with them so it would be great to hear um a little bit about that yeah, the ATC was great. We first got connected to them. Um, I had a business partner, and, and he and I started the company. And one of our professors at uh, at Hopkins put us in touch with Neil Davis at ETC. And um, we, we were still working out of our apartments and out of uh, college campus at the time. And we were thinking, you know, what, what are we going to do after we graduate? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna hire somebody. We're gonna make our first hire. We probably need to move out of the apartment with the dogs, with the girlfriends, so on and so forth, and uh, and get some legitimate office space. So we went over to the Eastern Campus on 33rd Street in uh, Waverly. We talked to Neil, and he was kind enough to to work out a deal with us where we'd have a graduated uh, increase in the rent price. So we started off with a couple hundred square feet. And I think we moved to three or four different offices at the Eastern Campus before we moved to the Canton Campus. And uh, that's when we moved out of the ETC. So the ETC was really helpful, both in connecting us with other companies, other people in town, and just trying to help us become a a real business, uh, get our legal issues in order, our accounting in order, and just provide a lot of good advice because, as we all know, they had dealt with probably over 100, maybe over 200 companies, startups at this point. So they're really helpful. And at this point, how old is your company? Uh, we're we're going to be 10 years old in May. And at what year did you start working with ETC? 2006. So, so I had one year left in college, and then after we graduated we moved right into the ETC. So what, so in, in, the, in the age of uh, the company, what year was that when you, when you went into ETC? We were maybe 10 or 11 or 12 months old. Okay, okay. And you stayed there for how, how long? About eight years. About eight years. Wow. So, so, so played a, a, pretty, um, a, a, a pretty 
consistent pivotal role in, in the development of the company as it went along. Yeah, and as you know, uh, small companies, when you're adding staff, you're going to move to a bigger office. And the ETC is really flexible with the lease terms. And they have a lot of office space of different sizes. So it was really nice for us to be able to move to, to five or six different offices within the ETC across their two campuses uh, during the evolution of the company. So since, since you have, um, have left the loving arms of uh, the ETC, is that uh, a place that you're still in, involved with in any, in any capacity? Absolutely. I, I actually just got back from a meeting there. So um, I'm one of the judges uh, and mentors for Accelerate Baltimore, which is the ETC accelerator program that just kicked off a couple weeks ago. So I was just meeting with one of the startups, Brinkbit. Uh, they're developing a game uh, development system and a whole ecosystem for uh, HTML5 games. Um, so I was just meeting with them to, to learn about what they're doing, see where they are in the evolution of their business, uh, compare notes, see if I had anything to offer them, and, and just see what's going on. So yeah, I'm still very involved with ETC. Um, lots of my friends are there. Lots of companies are still there. Uh, so we have some clients there. So still a very exciting place in town. You know, it's really funny for for uh, Nick and I, for whatever reason, um, he has a, a background in business for sure, um, albeit in commercial electrical construction. Um, is his uh, his his familial uh, business kind of history, um, and I have none at all. I'm just totally as kind of uh, I, I think it's definitely definitely my creative insight to stuff and my willingness to just throw myself at the wall is what's been lucky for me because I don't think that I I came to the table with much acumen in terms of 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 business stuff is concerned. But um, so so we've we've come at this place of kind of creating all these ideas and then just like i mean just bootstrapping them to death uh and and never really coming through uh a conduit of thinking about places like uh like the etc or or kind of any other of those um I don't know entities that are that are there to be resources to help people learn how to grow businesses and like do things to make their businesses ideally um, successful and and healthy and you know kind of the things that you really want for your business. Um, so th- those things are conversations that we've just started learning about since we started kind of working on startup soiree and and we're having a me- you know I'm meeting you know I'm meeting people like you and I'm meeting people like Neil uh, and and to hear them talk about kind of all these resources that are there that we just never you know just never never found out about for whatever reason we never found out about it so it's really um it's fascinating to learn about them now but it's also really inspiring to know that they're there and that there are you know people like you who benefited from them um but then also benefited to the degree that you want to make sure that you stay involved in in them to continue to kind of whatever be like an ambassador for the for the project moving forward sure yeah and i can't underscore how important it's been to just get out there show up go to events meet people network uh send those emails ask for those coffee meetings and just see where things go um you know so much of um, what we've accomplished to date has been serendipitous and just uh, random connections um, that really only were afforded to, to me and the company and, and our team uh, because of the people I know. So, Yair, you are a, uh, are you, you're a Maryland native, is that correct? No, I grew up in Ohio. Incorrect. Uh, and you, so did you come to Maryland for college? Yes, Okay, correct. and then you just decided to stay after that point? Well, I we started the company before graduating college, and then... Um, you know, uh, slowly grew from there. So I wasn't going to leave the company and leave Baltimore to go back home. Sure. So um, what year What year did you start in Baltimore? 2001. In 2001 was your, was your freshman year of college. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so just curious about what, what you think uh, about um, the, the Baltimore 
I don't want to call it the startup scene because it, that makes it feel so young. And, and what I'm hoping to get out of you in, in this question is um, a little bit of your depth of perspective um, in that you've been, you've been hustling on, on this train for a minute and you've gotten to see a lot of the growth that has happened. Uh, and it, and it, it gives you a little bit of insight on projecting kind of some of the things that you see coming in the future. So I'm just curious about what, what your, um, not what your vision of the future of Baltimore looks like, but um, some things that you that you think are going to happen um, and you're looking forward to. Sure. Well, um, that's a good question. Um, so, so like I said, met a lot of people through uh, through networking, and uh, that's one of the things I like about Baltimore, just how down to earth everybody is, and how easy it is to get connected to uh, movers and shakers uh, because there are so many movers and shakers and so many people doing cool, fun, interesting things. Um, so, so that's one of the strengths of Baltimore. And, uh, you know, I see that growing and I, I have been here about 15 years and I've seen different neighborhoods grow. Um, you know, I live in Mount Vernon now and there's been a lot of development here just since I've been here. Um, and I, I lived in Charles Village for a while and in between Charles Village, and uh, Mount Vernon, their station north. And of course, there's a lot of development there, a lot of development in Canton, uh, where my office is and where my office has been for a while. Um, so I think we'll continue to see more of that development. And every week I read the BBJ and I see, uh, you know, for the past year or two, it's been another development going up, uh, more millennials moving to town, more construction projects, more apartments. So there's clearly this uh, influx of young, talented people coming to the city um, or staying in the city. Uh, you know, like myself, I came from Ohio and uh, I decided to stay here because, uh, you know, it's a good place. Um, so definitely expecting that the city will grow a lot and there's going to be a lot more, um, you know, young, motivated people looking to, to start interesting ventures um, and to, to network across industries, uh, sort of in an interdisciplinary fashion. So, you know, I myself, I'm involved in the biking community and um, a couple other communities that uh, don't necessarily help my bottom line, if you will, um, in the company, uh, don't necessarily drive deals or drive sales. Um, but I know it's good for the city. Uh, it, it helps it become a place where I want to be. So I'm expecting to see a lot more uh, people like that uh, engaged with the development of the city, engaged with these different projects um, so that we really can achieve some more scale and, you know, get on the map and, and do cooler, bigger, better things. Yeah, that's a, a really inspiring answer to that question, man. Thank you for that. I um, w One of the things that I keep returning to saying is, uh, and I am a Baltimore native, uh, and one of the things that's most exciting to me and most inspiring to me is that uh, that I'm fine that I'm finally catching some traction and um, and and I care very deeply about the city that I'm from and I think that um, it uh, I think that it's a great place and that it's about to be the recipient of a lot of really um, beautiful kind of change in a really positive direction um, but I, I very much firmly believe that the the um, that the salvation of of cities like Baltimore, uh, and there are a lot of cities that are that are comparable to Baltimore across the United States. Um, I think that a lot of the salvation that's going to happen is going to come from um, private industry that is really growing robustly because, uh, for whatever reason, it's it's the right environment to produce that kind of opportunity and. Um, by the people that are buying, the, by the new people that are buying into the to the city, and it's it's not to say that the people that haven't always been here aren't going to play a role because they are, because um, they've they've hung out, they've stayed, they've stuck it through, and, but I think that uh, new people believing in the space and private business believing in the space is gonna uh, is gonna help to rehearten the people that have been here all along, and and that the those three elements together um, are going to create a really wonderful new way uh, that revitalization happens and that it doesn't just happen um, under the influence of a political dollar um, and that it doesn't just happen under the influence of uh, of 
of you know gen of five and below gentrifying uh, like a block and and then all of those you know seven brand stores that that flip an, an area come in and do it like there's a yeah. there's a middle ground there and I think that if we work hard enough that we're going to unearth we're going to like turn over the dirt that's hiding that 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 new way forward where it's not quite so um economically prosperity focused and it's more about kind of taking back communities for the sake of them being good places for us to live and whatever you know raise our children or take care of our parents or yeah, uh, I think at the end of the day, we, we do need the support of uh, people at the top, whether that's government or uh, big developers or, or you know, other well-heeled people. Um, but we also need the, the bottom-up approach, um, the, the doers, the movers and shakers, uh, people like us, uh, to, get, to get that scale and to get a lot of things done. So I have a, um, I've got just some kind of some, some personal uh personal hustle questions is what I like to call them. Um, I'm curious every day. Um, you, do you have anything that you, uh, consider a critical part of your, of your routine? I picked up working out again. So I go to the gym a couple times a week. Um, so that definitely helps get me up in the morning, um, and get to the gym. Um, other than that, you know, I, I, I try to be very organized in terms of uh, knowing what I'm supposed to be doing for the day. And usually that's just uh, going through my inbox um, and going to the meetings that I have scheduled on my calendar. Um, and uh, I don't know, I just try to keep sight of the fact that uh, uh, it's all about the process, um, about the pr process of um, getting of living life and um you know the, the days may go up and down um but uh I, I you know it's just a constantly improving life so just always trying to work harder to 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 build the life i want um and i noticed earlier in the interview you you mentioned um staying up on the on the bbj um which for all of our listeners out there in Dubai is the Baltimore Business Journal. Um, do you do you read regularly? Uh, the Business Journal or other things? Just in general, is reading a part of your of your of your habit? Yeah, one of my habits is to buy a book anytime somebody recommends it. Um, so the net result of that is that I have a lot of books I haven't read. <laughs> That's uh, where I was hoping you were going to go with that. <laughs> so um, I, I kind of sway between um, some fiction books and nonfiction books. Mostly I read nonfiction, um, you know, business books or biographies or things like that. Uh, but I have a ton of books that I've read maybe 20% of. Um, I do try to read the BBJ every week. Uh, there's all this good stuff in there, and I like to know what's going on in town. Um, and yeah, I read Economist and New Yorker. Not uh, not cover to cover. Not one of those people. Um, never will be. But um, that's what that's what I read. And Google News every day, a couple times a day usually. So I usually know what's going on in the world. All right. I've been I've been throwing this question out there, and. Uh... And and I'll ask this one, and then and then we'll we'll probably wrap up because I don't I don't want to waste too much of your time. But um, can you remember the moment when you realized that you should that you should create your product when when you when you thought like I mean did it was it like an aha moment or or were you searching for a product to create I mean you know you so so whatever you were in your undergrad so that that's it'll have an interesting. Um, you know, split to it in that regard. But, um, do you remember that? Do you have any idea about your aha moment? Well, my, my partner and I decided, uh, decided to start the company when, uh, we got rejected from a couple jobs that we had jointly applied to. And, uh, our thinking was, well, we don't have anything to do for the summer. So let's give this a go. And worst case, we'll graduate and get real jobs. Um, and then, you know, things just slowly grew from there. Uh, I'm still gainfully employed by my company. Um, but I guess before that, uh, you know, I was always hustling and selling stuff, working hard. 
Um, and uh, I don't know, like to be in control of my own destiny and, and can manage a lot of things at once. So I don't know, looking back, it just seems like this, this sort of made sense to me. Also, my dad is a, a professor and uh, he sort of manages his own projects too. So uh, manages his own lifestyle. So I think I, I got a lot of um, inspiration from that or, or that certainly was um, a role model and, and part of the thinking. So a big part of your kind of intrinsic motivation is uh, is lifestyle design. It's, it's really important to you to to keep control of of you know what what puts together your day to day. Well, yeah, you're, that that brings me to the end of what I what I've got up on deck. Um, I just want to ask you to to um, to restate one more time. Uh, let everyone know the. Uh, you know the best place to get in touch with you and to learn about your company and um, and anything else that you want to say uh, to the listeners of the of the podcast. Sure. So my name is Yair Flicker. My company is Smart Logic, S M A R T L O G I C. Uh, website's SmartLogic.io. You can find me on any social network uh, and on Gmail and on Skype as Y Flicker. Uh, I'm a pretty friendly guy. Feel free to send me an email. I, I love to meet people, love to network, and uh, love to hear what other people are working on. Uh, so don't hesitate to reach out. Awesome. That sounds good. Well, yeah, yeah, thank you for being a guest today. Um, look forward to seeing you around Baltimore and uh, hopefully seeing you at the February soiree. Sounds good. See you soon, Patrick. All right, bud. Have a good one. You too. See you. That brings us to the conclusion of yet another episode of the Startup Soiree podcast. I want to thank all of you for tuning in, and I also want to thank Yair Flicker from Smart Logic for being an excellent guest today. If you haven't yet, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you can, head over to the iTunes store and leave us a quick review. Your words help other people find our work. Lastly, I want to mention that next Thursday, which is the last Thursday of February, will be the second Startup Soiree event. If you're in the D.C. or Baltimore metro area and you're a company founder, head over to our webpage and find the Get Invited form. We would love to have you join this conversation. Until next time, peace. Peace.